What's going on everyone? Today we're here with Mark Daniels Jr. Now he's a professional fisherman and yes, I know we don't really hear that too much uh, from black people because a lot of us, when we think of getting involved with in the area of sports, we're thinking about basketball, football, etc. But we can do a whole lot more than that. So uh, Mark, thank you for joining us on the show today. Hey, not a problem. I appreciate you having me, Phil. So Mark, let me know, how did you get into fishing? How did you fall in love with it? Uh, man, you know, I grew up in the Bay Area in California. Um, uh, and man, as a kid, my dad, you know, it was one of his favorite pastimes. And, you know, I was fortunate enough to have my dad in my life. And, um, and, and he kept me in the outdoors, man. And so, you know, when he would get off work early some days on, 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 uh, from the job or, of course, on weekends when he had some free time, we spent a lot of our, our, our time together on the shores of the Bay, you know, whether it was in Richmond or, on the other side of the bay and Tipperon, Sausalito, some of these areas, fishing from the bank, you know. But it was there that I first had my first experience with fishing, catching my first fish, and uh, ultimately evolving into a professional angler that I am today. What kind of fish uh, did you catch on your very, very first one as a child? Yeah, I was saying that's, that's kind of a tricky question because we used to fish so much in my childhood, I don't know exactly. The species but i would have to imagine it was some sort of ocean perch which are very prevalent in the san francisco bay area and that's what we would target a lot of the times when we would fish so i'd say probably an ocean perch yep okay so you had mentioned your dad earlier and you say he's he's always been you know in your life and very yeah. close yeah. um what what's been the difference with your relationship with your dad and your overall upbringing as a man versus say some of your friends possibly that you had didn't have your dad around yeah you know it's uh Unfortunately, man, you know, and especially in, in our community, which well, is not our community, and in, in a lot of communities, that's a that's that's pretty common. You know, you, you have friends and uh, relatives, etc., that didn't grow up with their father, man. And I had a lot of friends growing up as as a kid that didn't really know their father. Um, and you know, for me, it kind of it kind of gave me a great foundation, and it really saved my life, man, because I grew up in Richmond, California. Um, it's a very, very uh, rough area, and there's a lot of a lot of things to get into that will not lead you uh, to become prosperous in life. And, of course, with my father being in my life and keeping me on the water and taking me fishing on weekends, you know, I didn't I didn't I didn't go down that path. You know, I was I, I would much rather be fishing with him on weekends than, you know, partying, etc. So um, having him in my life for sure gave me a great foundation. Uh, and then, and then fishing always gave me something to look forward to, and that and that really kept my nose clean. And I had a lot of other friends that didn't have that same guidance, and uh, unfortunately, the streets caught up with them, and they either, you know, selling drugs and, uh, you know, et cetera, Man, some of them even wound up getting shot and things of that nature. Man, it's, which happens all too common in our community. But you know, having my dad in my life kept me out of the way of all of that. Yeah, and I was bringing that up because, you know, for me, it's very important that fathers be, you know, in the lives of the children. Even if the mom and dad not together, it's still yeah. important for the dad to be there. Because especially with, with the sons, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, it gets to a point, I, and from what I've noticed about, and it gets to the age, maybe around 11, 12, 13, and they start making that little transition from, you know, boy to teenage, you know, to man. It takes a father to be there to, you know, shape and guide that young boy in that transition so that's wonderful to hear um oh, yeah. but you know a lot of black people like to fish i know a lot of black people in my family of course okay. love to fish oh, yeah. but nobody thought about taking it professionally so what got you to say you know what i'm gonna take what i love to do and do it professionally yeah i um again to kind of just spin off what you said man black people love to fish it's a huge we, we loved outdoors not just fishing i mean hunting uh etc you know backpacking there's all kind of things we'd love to do but we don't necessarily get credited with that but uh you know at a very early age i used to watch fishing on television as a kid and what shows that i would watch was tournament angling and i would see these guys and they go out and they compete and they bring in their day's catch and once i realized and understood that this is what these guys do full time for a living it, it at that point in time which was probably at the age of about six or seven um, that is what I wanted to do. You know, I had already had the love of fishing in general, uh, which my, my dad instilled into me. And so I took that 
coupled with the fact that I'm watching guys on TV do this full time, I'm going in my mind, this is what I want to do. Um, and then as I got older, into my early teens, I was really fortunate. One of my dad's best friends, who's like a second father to me, his name is Doug Rogers. Uh, he's actually a white guy. He's I call him my white dad, you know. And uh, he was a bass fisherman. You know, he wasn't uh, extremely experienced, but he loved to bass fish. And mm -hmm. so he knew that I loved to fish as well. And so uh, on weekends, me and my dad, we start going out with him on his really small bass boat, but it was a bass boat. You know, for us, that was a big deal because we were fishing off the shore. So he started taking us out on weekends and showing us a couple of techniques that he knew. And, man, from the first time I stepped foot on that boat, I mean, it was like, it was it was it was, it was mind chain it was mind blowing it was like something that I I knew right then the first time I stepped on foot on that boat and I made my first cast this this is what I want to do this is what I want to do I don't know how I'm gonna do it I don't know where I'm gonna get the money the experience etc but this is what I want to do and I set my mind to it and I never and I never let and I never let go of it. So you know it's, it's great to do something that you love and also get revenue from it. I mean that's just the best of both worlds. Um, so when you tell other black people, they say, they say, what you do for a living? And you tell them that you're a professional angler. What, how, what's their response to it? Yeah, you get, you get real, I get weird reactions just because, um, most, most African Americans don't realize this is something that you can make a career of. You know, fishing is one of America's greatest pastimes. And so most people, especially black folks that live in the inner cities, etc. We go fishing to get away from the day-to-day -day hustle and bustle, the rat race, um, you know, all the interaction, the traffic. You know, that's something we like to do for those measures. Or, you know, a lot of us, we love to eat fish. So we're going to go out fishing and go catch us, you know, a couple catfish or whatever you're targeting, bass, bluegill, etc. you know, for dinner. And so fishing has always been looked upon like that uh, on a greater scale in the black community. So when I tell them this is what I do full time, Sometimes I get some funny looks, and, and sometimes it's like, yeah, right, type of deal. But it's just the, the simple fact that they're they're uneducated on the potential uh, of taking something that's a, America's greatest pastime into a full time career. So when you're talking about a full time career, uh, now when you've fished professionally, um, are you doing it like tournaments to, to get certain prize money, or do or your revenue comes through sponsorships, kind of how, just so they can get educated on it. Yeah, it's a, it's actually a combination of both. I am a full-time competitive tournament angler, um, which there are associated winnings with that. Uh, but without sponsorship, you're not going to make it as a full-time angler. So most anglers rely on their sponsors day in and day out to make a living at this more so than what they win. Um, these are organizations and companies that support you and believe in you. Uh, and they back you financially and you know that's really what pushes you through the year because fishing is very uh, fickle at times and you don't always know that you're gonna have success in this particular event you might finish bottom of the pack and not make a check um, and you don't get any revenue from that but then you still have your sponsors supporting you and backing you to help you make it through the year even though you had a particular you might have had a bad event so now somebody could be listening because a lot of times, you know, we bring different people on and they uh, listen to people that's speaking and, and they take the advice and um, they become successful with something. I just had a re sister recently just tell me about something that she became successful with uh, in a previous interview. So if somebody say, you know what, man, I want to become a professional angler. What's the first step they need to do? Um, the, the first thing, you know, it just depends on what age they, they are, honestly, uh, for the younger crowd. I get reached out to quite a bit on social media from junior high school kids, high school kids. You know, uh, fishing has become such a popular sport now. They have junior high school fishing teams. They got high school fishing teams. They're giving away scholarships for college, collegiate, competitive fishing teams. And so that's immediately the first thing that comes to my mind for the younger, the younger crowd, um, because that gives you exposure to the tournament side of things at a very early age, and you can grow and develop within the sport and learn a lot of the ropes whereas kind of for me we didn't have all of that i kind of more or less got thrown in the fire and you just kind of have to you know learn as you go um so for the younger crowd i think the the the, the junior high school to high school and the collegiate tournaments is a great place to start 
um, for your older crowd that are out of high school, maybe even out of college, etc. You know, I started out in a fishing club. Um, I joined a local bass club. I didn't have a boat. I went as what they call a non-boater, and basically that's an individual that gets on the back of somebody else's boat and fishes for the day, helping them out with fuel, etc., and um, get experience like that. And then once you get a little bit of experience on a grassroots level, then you can start jumping into some of these smaller, but more, um, uh, let's see, they're smaller, but they're more structured, more realistic tournament events. And there's several organizations out there. Um, you know, I grew up fishing an organization called Angler's Choice, One Bass. Then on a bigger scale, you have FLW, and then you have Bassmasters. And so just reaching out to these organizations, excuse me, organizations, seeing what events they have available and uh you know starting out at the bottom of the grassroots the tbf is, is well that's what i left out tbf um that's where i came up through these are places where you can get grassroots experience and then work your way up the ladder all right so guys make sure to check those things out now let me ask you a question um yeah. how could people contact you because i know some people that that's want to contact you and find out the steps outside of just what they heard. Um, how can they contact you on social media or any other uh, place? And, uh, and social media is right there in the mix of all of it. So I'm on pretty much all flat platforms and uh, simply type in my name, Mark Daniels Jr. And that's going to be Instagram, Facebook, and then also have a YouTube channel, which is also Mark Daniels Jr. Where I do instructional videos, uh, recaps of certain events, etc. Uh, yeah, man, reach out to me. Drop me a question. I try my best to get back to everybody, uh, but sometimes it gets a little hectic and I don't right away, but at some point I certainly will. And then last but not least, my website, which is uh, markdanielsjrfishing.com. All right, so make sure you contact Mark Daniels to get some information about fishing because I know a lot of you brothers and sisters like going out there fishing. I see you doing it. I grew up doing it as well. So contact him. Maybe you could take it to the next level and uh, become a professional angler. So, Mark, thank you for joining us on the show today. Not a problem, Phil. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it.